Well, good evening, all my little Pokemans. He's here with you tonight, and, uh, you know, a little pink and fluffy, and, uh, not much otherwise dressed. In fact, everything I'm wearing, you can see on camera, uh, otherwise. Naked me, too. <laughs> <sighs> so, we got a little story time. This story goes back to just over a year ago. Um... Well, more or less, a little over a year ago. Uh, it was January of 2020. And we were just starting to hear about some disease over in China that maybe was going to get over here. It was supposed to be really bad. Whatever. I dealt with other uh, large viruses and things, and uh, I haven't really had any major problems. And then January, end of January, we got two. Disney World, as we'd had scheduled since back in August. When you have something like that scheduled since back in August, and you've paid thousands of dollars out for fun, by golly, you're going to go and have that fun, because you paid for it. <laughs> uh, and we did. End of January, early February, we went out and had fun. Last of February through, and into March. And in the beginning of March, I uh, went to see my family for Christmas. I know, I know. That I, I'm really bad at getting to see my parents for actual Christmas normally. <laughs> so, the fact that we made it there for uh, a March Christmas, it's pretty good. It's hard to get time off around December where I work, and then January. And because we planned a vacation, it just didn't happen. Uh... So that has been the last time I've seen my parents was the first weekend in March of 2020. And I believe it was the following day or following Monday after that, uh, we went out to eat in a restaurant. Uh, and it happened to be the rib place, which is... As I'm pointing at my screen, I'm literally pointing right at the rib place like a block and a half, maybe two blocks, depending on how you judge that last one, from where I am actually sitting. The one that I can smell if you open the windows on any summer day, because, oh, they waft so well. And that was the last place I got to eat out before pandemic hit. And then, fast forward just a couple of weeks, to um, middle of March of 2020. It was, I think it was March 16th, and work threw down the gauntlet and said, mandatory overtime. Offline time cut off pretty much entirely. You were all online taking frontline calls, extra hours, no questions, no choices. So while everyone else was being sent home with no plan of actually how to work or fired or laid off, we were basically tasked with extra hours, extra work, and extra lower level stuff that we had been promoted away from for years. <sighs> Let me tell you, the start of this fun was rough. Extra fun was the week that happened was my birthday. As that week had gone through, I was really, really hoping that on that Saturday or Sunday, we would get to go out for dinner for my birthday, March 19th. Guess what didn't happen? <laughs> so, this fun that started just over a year ago, overall, depending on how you look at it, a year and three months. But the actual cascade of when it actually started to impact Americans, well, I'm not going to say it doesn't impact Americans because people had it before then, before the world kind of locked down on us and we had to start dealing with this. 
was right at my birthday. Happy birthday, Caddy. You're locked down. <laughs> now, I kept having optimism things would get better within a year, or within like a few months. I was hoping to get to go to Anthrocon that July. Obviously, that didn't happen. Uh, in fact, even just moderate cookouts had to get cut off in the, the summer, in the late spring, early summer phase. Really was bummed that our uh, the, the Memorial Day picnic we always go to did not get to happen. Uh, in fact, the Labor Day picnic, well, Labor Day, hang out at Javi's house and pretend we're watching some NASCAR race that I don't remember which one goes on during that weekend. That didn't happen. And that was Augusty to September -y phase. Uh, already by the time that one hit, though, we'd kind of come to terms with normality was kind of on hold definitely until a vaccine had been produced. The beginning is still have that hope that Okay, this might still pass. I'm not saying fluorescent orange was right that it all just disappeared in April, but I had the hopes that whatever it is, because any other flu or cold tended to not last months and months. This monster, on the other hand, certainly did. Uh, Fortunately, the mandatory overtime started to go away pretty quickly, as well as did the mandatory online time. And uh, we got back to a major form of normality for our work. And as everything balanced out and people started working from home at our job and everyone else's jobs, things balanced out. And that was better. In fact, a lot of companies over the last year have found that their employees who did not necessarily need to be in an office, actually were more productive, surprisingly, when not in a stressful office environment. That doesn't mean everyone is better off that way. Some people do work off better when they have coworkers to work with directly, physically. But for most of us, we don't necessarily need the stress of everyone else around us. And more people discover this and were like, whoa, my life's better. I can work better this way. And their bosses recognize this. A uh, few people I work, I, they're good friends with or related to, their jobs actually went, well, we don't really see a need to keep you in the office. This, this office place costs a lot of money. And you're doing better work not in the office. We should keep you this way because it's cheaper for us and more productive. So good for that. Some people that wanted work at home as a probable normal thing now have it. Uh, and as the year progressed, more of this kept getting normal normalized. More things are stuck as staying at home versions. Uh, but still missing some major things that we wish we could do, like sit down at a restaurant and have dinner. On the other hand, I've pretty much mastered steak to the point of I don't think I can go to a restaurant and find too many places that are going to cook it better than me. They have to actually have better sources of beef than I do to make a steak better than my steak now. And that saves me a lot of money because for, say, the cost of my full meal, including soft drink and sides and stuff like that, I get like a four pack of steaks that I can make for the two of us. Or a three pack if I'm looking at ribeyes. Uh, but a four pack of strips or a four pack of fillets generally is about how much I paid for just me at uh, yeah, a moderate restaurant. Um, someplace like uh, 
Texas Roadhouse or Longhorn Steakhouse or here's a couple you won't know unless you're from this area, the Factory or Triangle Park. Now, the Factory and Triangle Park are a better choice other than over the main chains. And they definitely are the best places I would go out to eat steak. Okay, they are still high on the list of things that would definitely do at reasonable prices. Okay, so just, just leave that there. Those are two restaurants I miss and I want to go back to. But the idea of getting steak out is less of a drive for me because not only have I got it down to a system where I have so little I have to deal with to make it, but I make the flavor hit the way I want it. Um, and that's a good thing. So I have definitely got that out of this, uh, this mess. So that could potentially keep saving me some money over the long term. In general, the fact that I'm been, we haven't been eating out once or twice a weekend, usually a nicer place like, well, Factory, Triangle Park, BJ's, some place that's pretty darn okay. And maybe like a second place like, um, I don't know, uh, an Arby's or uh, a Culver's or um, Wendy's, something like that. Something that's not expensive, or pizza, you know, something basic-y, and then something nice -y for the two weekend days. Uh, now I'm not doing that, and usually just the one day being steak, and usually very good steak, and the other day I might make something somewhat fun, or I may just have basically freezer fiesta, figure something out, put it in the oven, and enjoy it on your own time. Uh, so that's actually been good for us, financially. Way less spent in gas in the car since I can only go shopping once every couple of weeks, so pff, that's good. Uh, we did get a uh, chest freezer over the last year, so I can store larger amounts of frozen foods and just be ready for the fact that I'm off shopping for every two weeks actually really useful. You'd be amazed how much that's helped reduce stress, make my life easier in a lot of ways, in a more permanent fashion than just a little bit of because I can't do X. More of a, now we don't have to worry about any of this stuff. I can, when things go back to normality and I can go to the grocery store twice a week, I don't have to worry as much about getting frozen stuff because every couple of weekends I can just go to Sam's Club and buy two big bags of popcorn chicken and the big bag of frozen salmon and the big bag of frozen uh, um, tuna steaks or uh, a nice big flat of regular steaks for the uh, cooking on Sundays. I have the option and I don't have to feel rushed space cramped. <sighs> now we did miss some holidays. Granted, we still cooked a turkey in this house. And then I didn't make turkey, which I was a regular every other week thing for a while. For a couple of months. Uh, but <laughs> let's just say for like a week and a half, I ate a lot of turkey because I got one big enough for all our friends to eat. <laughs> but we missed that. We missed hanging out with friends at uh, Christmas as well. Still haven't seen my parents since uh, March, first weekend of March of last year. But the important part of this story is coming up. Oh, yes. My birthday was last week as I'm recording this. I recorded this on a Monday. My birthday was on Friday, March 19th. I turned a big round number. It was this many. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, and, uh, lo and behold, in this state, 
as of today at 9 a.m. when they unlocked up to my current age to be allowed to go get vaccinated. I went online, I registered, and my first shot appointment is next Monday, the 29th. So here we are, just a hair over one solid year since this house imprisonment had basically started. And I just had my first parole hearing. And uh, I'm going to be partially released in a week. As in that I'm going to go and get to have that uh, first shot uh, Monday, March 29th at 9 a.m. at the Kroger right over there. Remember I was pointing at that red place? Two doors down. The rib, Well, three doors. There's the rib place, and then there is a, a Coney uh, shop. That's a hot dog store for all of you non-Hoosiers. Uh, uh, followed by a donut shop, which I've not had a great experience with. All I've had was cinnamon rolls that the in-laws bought there and brought home. I don't wake up really good early on my days off, so I'm not going to rush to go buy donuts. Sorry, donut shop. You close at 1. I'm not normally up that early. And out the door and wearing pants. But the next door over is Kroger, where I'm going to get my shot. So, about there. <laughs> Extra good news, Autumn just got his first shot at that same location this morning. And come the 12th, he gets his second shot. And come the 19th of next month, I get my second shot. So a year and a month into this, personally entrusted uh, imprisonment, because the government didn't make us stay home. We all did select to stay home to actually try and protect ourselves. Um, we did our best to make it through this, not get sick, and, well, looks like we're going to succeed here. Uh, I'm looking forward to this. I really am. It's almost surreal, the fact that after a year long, you kind of get that Stockholm Syndrome thing where it just feels normal to be imprisoned in your own house. But knowing that in like three weeks from now, it's all over. Well, I'm going to give it another two weeks after that before you go out because that's about how long it takes for the full immunity to really kick in. But by the end of April, I'm free. I can be somewhat normal again. I'm still going to wear a mask. I'm still going to be careful. I'm still going to wash my hands for 20 seconds. I've learned my lesson. I don't want to have another COVID-19 hit me. I don't want to have another uh, disease like this take down my country and the world. And I want to be able to do things again. I want to go to conventions. Yeah, I'm bummed. Anthrocon got canceled already. This sucks, but I'm not mad at Anthrocon again for this. Again, I am not mad at them. They really did the right thing. I'm hoping some smaller things will be able to still function, like uh, the Memorial Day picnic. Mostly because the majority of the people that go to that are well over the 40 range. So, good chance most of them will be able to be vaccinated prior to that event happening. So there's a chance that that might get open to people who've already been taken care of. Almost definitely the Labor Day thing is going to happen this year because um, by then, anyone that wants it's almost guaranteed they're going to be able to have had the opportunity to get their shots. So as long as you're willing to take care of yourself and take care of others in this sense, we'd be able to be together and have fun. 
And that means trick or treat will go back to normal this year. For a costumer like me, it's a big deal. Trick or treat's an important thing. It's in a it was one of my favorite parts of the year growing up. Thanksgiving can be normal again. Christmas can be well as normal as we ever have it. I mean, I haven't gone and seen family on Christmas for years because of well, let's just say I don't usually get it off. <laughs> But I do get double time and a half for those two days that I'm forced to work, so it pays for itself. Effectively, it pays for buying presents for the family, but it pays for it. <laughs> um, yeah. So, it's weird, it's scary, but it's happening. I'm really, really excited excited to get to go out and do things excited that the zoo's opening up here in a few weeks and by then I'll have had my second shot I'm not going to be past my two week mark then so definitely keep the mask on definitely going out during the uh, special members only hours type thing that I was doing last year which I still got to go to the zoo more than enough times to pay for my membership um, so that's definitely a good thing. Um, being that they have a lot of walking spaces and uh, they open it to members only in the mornings with limited number of tickets available, made it a nice thing and a nice escape. And it helped a lot during this. So that journey I just took you on I didn't really introduce well. It was my last year. My year in self-enforced uh, lockdown. I survived it. I'm gonna keep surviving the rest of it. And I can go back to normality. And it's awesome. I hope everyone else out there can get the vaccine as quickly as possible. Different states are opening at different times because of availability of injections um, and sites and stuff and whatever. So I hope you are all able to get taken care of as soon as possible and able to get back out and enjoy life too. Because by 2022, I want to see you all out there. There's another good thing that came out of this this YouTube channel. This never would have happened without this, uh, this lockdown. That's what encouraged me to do this. A month from now, I'm not going to be stuck here. But a month from now, this will have survived. This is going to keep going. So I found out how much this means to me and how much doing this every day makes me happier. <sighs> so, that's the thing. I hope you're all well. I hope you all stay well. I hope you all get your injections as soon as possible. So that, I don't know, you make the Anthrocon. You say you saw this video. You say you want a hug. You get it. Heck, you didn't have to say you saw this video. I'd give you a hug if you asked. I'm hug friendly. Hug friendly. <sighs> well, I babbled on enough. If you have any fun commentary about your last year, go ahead. Comment section. Give me some typical types down there. Whatevs. Good, bad, or otherwise. Good experiences, bad experiences. However it's turned out for you. I'm trying to look on the positive, though, so especially any positive things that came out of this for you, mentally, physically, whatever, let me hear it. But for now... Thank you for spending some time with me. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the little dingly bell. Hit the little dingly bell. Let you know when I post new videos. Who knows? Could be a YouTube video. Him and Daisy really do help me emotionally and mentally. So, good chance I'll be one of them. And both my Patreon link and my coffee link in the description box below. But in all fairness, thank you for spending time watching this. Thank you for giving me a reason to do this every day. Thank you for just staying with it. 
I look forward to seeing you all in my next video. For now, thank you for being awesome, and I'll see you again real soon.